Okay, this is uh, this is by no means my most informative video, but I'm kind of excited, uh, so I'm gonna post it. Who cares? Uh, so this is my Commodore 128D, or more accurately, a Commodore 128 uh, DCR, uh, because it has a uh, metal case uh, and the more Amiga-ish kind of form factor, as opposed to the breadbox kind of uh, shape of the traditional 128D. Or sorry, 128. Uh, so, uh, as background, I bought this machine probably, oh gosh, 1997 or so, uh, from a friend of mine back when I was in college. And obviously it was, was pretty old at the time, but I was already kind of a retro computer freak at that point, so I bought it. Uh, and I brought it home and plugged it in, and it ran great for about five minutes. And then it made a really horrible popping noise and smelled really bad and never started again. Uh, so I figured something had gone horribly wrong, something probably having to do with the power supply. Uh, but I never really got around to doing anything with it, so it ended up wrapped up carefully in a plastic bag in the closet. Uh, and sat there for a number of years until just recently when I got inspired to get it going again. And uh, I did. And uh, it works. Uh, I just got it, uh, got it fixed today. I had to uh, order some capacitors from Jane because I don't have a good electronics store here. Uh, Radio Shack kind of failed me and didn't have the capacitors I needed, but you know, it's Radio Shack, so what do you want? Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I, I knew there was something, uh, something wrong with it. I knew it was probably something to do with the power supply. And in fact, putting a meter on the power supply, it wasn't putting out anything at all. Uh, so I put out a sort of desperate plea on, uh, Jerry Ellsworth's, uh, Facebook page. I have to give a, a shout out to Jerry here. Uh, I made a post on her page because I'd searched around the net for schematics, troubleshooting, that sort of thing. I hadn't found anything useful. And she said, well, look around, there's probably some stuff on the internet somewhere. And a few minutes later, uh, Bill Hurd, uh, as in Bill Hurd, the dude who designed this machine and several others, uh, replied to the same comment thread and said, hey, why don't you check out these schematics and sent me a link. Uh, interestingly enough, the schematics that he sent were not for the correct power supply. Apparently there were at least three, as far as I can tell, for the North American 128 DCR. Uh, mine has a Mitsumi power supply, which I kind of guessed by looking at the logo and trying to suss it out. Uh, but interestingly enough, the schematics that he did send for the other manufacturer's power supply had a particular resistor circled uh, and said, hey, if you happen to have a Mitsumi power supply and the machine isn't doing anything and you're not getting a power light and it's not booting, why don't you check this resistor? And in fact, I checked that resistor and it was open circuit. Uh, so that was kind of the key that I needed. I replaced that and I replaced a, uh, a little capacitor that had a pretty obvious scorch mark on it. So I can't really chalk this up to my troubleshooting skills. This was, you know, pretty obvious, you know, caveman kind of stuff. Uh, but absolutely thanks to, to Jerry and to Bill both for, uh, for helping me out. And uh, I put, the, uh, put those two components into the power supply, wired it all up, and uh, in fact, there she goes. Uh, here it is booting up in uh, just absolutely beautiful 80 column mode. Um, you sort of forget, uh, you know, in the days of, you know, your iPad having 2500 by whatever resolution and your phone having, uh, you know, greater than, you know, what we would used to call Super VGA resolution, you know, you forgot how good 80 column text looked back in the day. This is a, a Commodore 1084S monitor. It is ridiculously sharp, very, very nice. Uh, the machine works well. It um, uh, boots up into 64 mode just perfectly. Uh, if I switch the monitor over to RGB. Yeah, uh, so the machine works great. Uh, I, I liked the 128D for, for quite some time just because of the, the versatility of it. Uh, it was one of the first consumer multiprocessor machines. Uh, the machine can start up in its own native mode as a, a 128 with 128 minus whatever the system takes up, bytes available. Uh, it can boot up into 
uh, an emulation mode of the C64 as we see here, although calling it an emulation isn't really accurate. I mean, it's a 64. The 64 hardware is on board. There's uh, you know, there's a SID, there's all the, you know, MOS chipsets that went into a 64, it's all there. And there's also a Zilog Z80 on board such that if you have the appropriate boot disk, uh, this thing will boot up into CPM, and with the correct uh, settings on the disk drive, it will read CPM disks from uh, K-Pros and all sorts of other, you know, CPM machines. So. Uh, pretty fascinating the, the way this thing is architected. It's a, it's a pretty amazing machine. Uh, speaking of the drive, the internal 1571 drive doesn't seem to read anything. Uh, I have a whole uh, selection of software of which this is just one box of several. Uh, it doesn't seem to read anything. Uh, I know the disks are old, but I'm guessing the drive is not reading correctly, so that's my next troubleshooting task. Uh, I also have an external 1571 and a couple of 1541s for my 64 to try on it. I just haven't tried that yet. Um, in terms of uh, what else to do uh, other than fixing the drive, the previous owner installed a Jiffy DOS ROM onto it, which is nice, but the old school punch Dymo label and this ugly ass red toggle switch are kind of gruesome, so I was kind of thinking about trying to clean that up and make it look a little nicer. Also, as you can see, the machine is pretty yellowed, which happens over time. Uh, I was thinking about doing a RetroBrite application on the monitor, the plastic parts of the uh, console, the, the keyboard, and the, uh, the 1351, uh, the mouse, which is just beautiful. I love this mouse, by the way. Um, and trying to, to clean it up a little bit to its, its original kind of happy grayish plastic color. But uh, as this now, the, uh, the machine runs pretty well. Uh, it cranks up in every mode. Everything seems pretty nice. The drive only seems to be the, the big problem. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a lovely machine. I'm glad I got it back together. So uh, yeah, I was just excited and wanted to post something. So uh, anyway, I'll post some more details soon as I do some more work with it. Catch y'all later. Bye.